Hello, my name is Rachel Kincaid. Today I'll be discussing the effects of olive fungus on weight gain in goats as a model for ruminants. A little background knowledge, we know that there are about 7 billion people that currently populate our planet. And that number is expected to reach 9 billion by the year 2050. We also estimate that about 88% of the world's population eats meat. So as our population increases, so will the demand for meat. This can become a problem for our livestock producers as they can only provide the livestock that they can afford to feed. So finding a more cost efficient way to produce livestock will not only benefit our producers, but benefit our economy as well. We also know that the cost of feed is much greater during intensively managed feeding periods, such as winter months. So looking at reducing the cost of those winter supplementations will also be extremely beneficial. Um, and overall, we want to increase the profitability and productivity of our livestock producers. One way we can start doing this is by looking at wasted agricultural byproducts and finding a use for them. So the population of olive producers in Texas is increasing. So we began looking at olive pumice, which is a byproduct of making olive oil that has no predetermined purpose or monetary value. It's often thrown out and used as compost. So the, by using olive pumice in our livestock industry, this will also reduce the waste in the olive industry. Uh, this is just a diagram showing how olives start out in a vineyard, they move to the olive mill industry where they are processed, and then not only do they produce the olive oil, but they also produce olive mill wastewater, olive kernels, and olive pumice. So the objective of this study was to determine if olive pumice could be used as an acceptable source of feedstuff to maintain weight during the colder months in ruminant species. Phase one of this research was to evaluate the pumice. So we start out with our fresh from the mill olive pumice, which has the highest crude protein of a 7.7%, which is the most desirable nutrient content. But when you look at the moisture percentage, it's at an 80.3%, which is a major concern in terms of shelf life and spoilage. So the fresh from the mill olive pumice would not be the most efficient way to feed our livestock. And then when we look at the dried olive pumice, the moisture content is much lower at a 2.5%, which is much more convenient in terms of storage and shelf life. But the crude protein goes down to a 4.2%, which is a pretty poor profile and would not be efficient for feeding livestock either. So then we look at olive pumice silage, which has a 6.5% crude protein, which is an acceptable nutrient profile. And then it has a 64.1% moisture, which is a more feasible way to store our olive pumice than the dried pumice would, or excuse me, than the fresh pumice. So overall, the silage was determined to be the most desirable. In a palatability test in a home environment, show cattle and goats both refused to eat the product whereas commercial cattle actually were enthusiastic about the product. The smell and taste was unfamiliar to all the livestock. Not many livestock have ever been introduced to olive pumice or olive products in general. Um, and then the taste was very bitter. So molasses was added to the feed groups to increase the palatability. Phase two of the research was to start the commercial feeding trial. So for materials and methods, we started with 28 mature Spanish does with an average weight of 39.72 kilograms. They were selected by stage of life, gender, and then they were randomized by weight. They were then split into four separate testing groups, seven goats per group, and they were blocked by weight. They were fed once a day for 49 days 
and they were held in herringbone style pins as pictured here. So the treatment and control rations were fed at a 2% body weight. The first group was a 3 to 1 olive to feed ratio, the second was a 1 to 1 olive to feed ratio, and the third was a 1 to 3 olive to feed ratio. The last group was the control group, which was only pelleted feed with no olive pumice. Each of the four groups got molasses added into their feed ration, again for palatability purposes. The nutrient analysis showed that olive pumice in the silage form had a 6% crude protein and a 16% fat, where the pelleted feed had a 16% crude protein and a 1% fat. So the, although the crude protein in the olive pumice was much lower than the pelleted feed, it does make up somewhat in the fat percentage, especially when we're talking about feeding animals and maintaining their weight in winter months. It does have a much higher fat percentage than the pellet feed. The molasses has a 2.7% crude protein and a 4% fat. The hay has a 4% or 4.5% crude protein. And the hay was Bermuda grass that was provided ad libitum to all the goats and the weight was taken weekly to adjust the rations. So we did a nutrient analysis on all the testing groups and we found that the higher the amount of olive pumice, the lower the amount of crude protein as expected as the crude protein in the olive pumice was much lower than the pelleted feed but that did not affect the average daily gain amongst the testing groups. The average daily feed consumption per day did vary between test groups, but the controlled group with only pelleted feed actually consumed the least amount of feed, and the group with the most amount of olive pumice consumed the most amount of feed. So overall, as stated before, average daily gain was not different between treatment and control groups. So this can be used to reduce the cost to the producer. And olive pumice was also promoted to increase feed consumption and had a palatability effect on the animals. So this could also be used in terms of weight management in winter months where animals don't necessarily want to eat the olive pumice could increase their fat percentage and their desire to consume the feed. So the control group costed about 64 cents per kilogram and consumed an average of a 0.693 kilograms a day, whereas in the three to one ration only costed about 15, per, 15 cents per kilogram and consumed average of 0.784 kilograms a day. So producers can save on average $33 a head over a 120 day feeding winter period if pumice is acquired at no cost. So the relevance of this is that all of pumice is an acceptable source of feedstuff for livestock. Livestock producers can reduce their cost of feed and all of producers can market their waste products. For future directions of where this research could possibly go is to determine the most efficient level of inclusion rations and add in some weather implications as this was done in Texas. It would be more interesting to see if it would have any varying effects in a colder climate and then a larger population, a post-mortem analysis to see if maybe the olive pumice had an effect on the meat, and an intensive vetting of test animals to reduce outliers. And that is all I have, thank you.